Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best selling author, and the only three time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be joined by Joshua Lee, the founder of StandoutAuthority.com. Man, you have done so much and have come so far. I mean, you're an entrepreneur, business owner, author, coach, marketer, husband, father. Um, I mean, you built some amazing things that are disrupting the marketplace. Let's just dive right in. How did you get started? Oh, man, Seth. Uh, that, that's why I've, I've been doing so many things, right? I've been doing it for two decades at least. So, well, I mean, Really, we could go back in. How did I get started? I started selling candy out of my locker back in middle school. <laughs> but, you know, those, those are those things. No, I, I really got started back in 2002, 2003 in the online ad space. Um, I had moved from Texas out to California because I originally kind of had my broker's license and I was doing loans back then. It was great business to be in. But in California, I kind of learned really quickly that as I always say, people would uh, run over their own grandmother to close a loan. And it really put people in bad situations. I just had to get myself out. So I had a friend invite me into that world. And shortly thereafter, I said, wow, this is amazing. And I kind of want to do it myself and kind of kicked it off. All right. So I know the longer version is, is in the books, um, but let's move forward in time just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you've generated, you, you've managed God, it's it's like an insane amount, like ad spends of over half a billion dollars working with um, like MySpace and Google. You've generated the first person I know who can put a trillion behind the number of impressions they've generated. So how did you do, how did you get started in that space? And then we'll talk about the amazing things you're up to now. Yeah, no worries, man. I mean, that was back in 2000, 2003, right? Getting in that space, I was really kind of blessed Less than cursed, right? Um, at a young age, I was able to kind of get in the space. And one of my first clients was MySpace. So, you know, we kind of went in there and being able to get the exclusive contract to be able to monetize their traffic um, really kind of kicked everything off. This was the wild, wild west where, you know, it was like printing money because I had a contract with them and then I had another agreement uh, with um, Overture, which became Yahoo. Um, so that's more of a company that everyone understands. And we played the margins, right? We, we bought MySpace's traffic at pennies on the dollar, if not lower than that, and then resold it in arbitrage, bought low, sell high, and basically sold it to Overture for, for keywords on, you know, that we would drive people to. So like mesothelioma back in the day was worth hundred dollars a click, right? Yeah. So, you know, when you're making, you know, you're buying tenths of a penny traffic and then selling it for a dollar, the margin on that was massive. And you're talking about trillions of clicks, right? Trillions of impressions. So that's kind of where I started working with companies like MySpace, Yahoo, Google, and building multiple different companies and everything that you could imagine monetizing from CPC to CPM, CPL, CPA. I mean, I could give you acronyms all day of how people, how we monetized them. It was an amazing way to be able to do that. But, you know, um, after a certain time, that's kind of where I had to switch these days is you know, I had to get away from this monetizing and actually figure out the best way to be able to connect with that people is actually true engagement. All right. And then, I mean, obviously, I mean, we could spend days unpacking everything you did there. Talk a little bit about how Standout Authority came to be and how you're disrupting, for example, the LinkedIn marketplace now. 
Yeah, Seth. I mean, that's the biggest difference, right? As I said, being able to manage all those adver- all that advertising, all that traffic, the biggest thing that I really realized was there's a huge difference between traffic and actually true engagement. And when I was concentrating specifically on the money, it was leading me down a path, right? I mean, I was kind of going through 45 pounds overweight, um, my relationship becoming monetary, and I had no vision about where I was going and just knew where I was at. And it actually ultimately um, resulted in me in going through a divorce, and, you know, resetting, uh, I kind of sell, sold all my companies, walked away and reset my life. And that's kind of where standard authority was born because I wanted to be able to do more. Two kids wanted to be able to do better because I taught and did a lot of the things to help people monetize our, our online space. I mean, it's crazy to think that I had a hand in developing some of the first social media ads ever that everyone uses today almost 20 years ago with MySpace. So only you got 1%, you know, (laughs) if I, right, you know, we made a lot of money back then, but you know, it's definitely different, right? I I didn't get any percentage. I was just, I was concentrated on the money immediately. And that's kind of where we switched with standard authority, man. I wanted to kind of go in and be able to educate, inspire, and draw in an audience, not just sell them. And growing up as an only child, the biggest things that I held with higher than anything else was my human connections, right? How do I actually connect in those relationships that I was building with people? Because I wasn't born into them. And so I took a lot of understanding online advertising and marketing and understanding the human connection and standard authority is about being able to get rid of the B2B and B2C and go 100% H2H, human to human, because every company is run by another human being. Most of us have just forgotten that through our marketing, you know, years and years of teaching marketing, going through and trying to monetize everything. So that's what we do at Standard Authority, work with influencers to be able to build out true engagement marketing tactics, to be able to connect with those people and not sell them. And that's the massive difference because you're on LinkedIn, you see it. We all get these messages, right? That kind of go through and it's just pitch after pitch. And they're hoping that after a thousand pitches, they'll get the one sale when and evident, we all know that they're just pissing off 999 people and there's a better way to be able to do it. Absolutely. So there are two different, I mean, there's, I, I would say two different segments of LinkedIn marketing. Oh, yeah. There's the automation software tools and that allow you to automate that reach to those thousand people to annoy them. And then there's the service companies that you can hire who say they will do it for you. So talk a little bit about how you're disrupting both at the same time. Yeah, no worries. So this is the biggest thing. One, if you've used any of that automation, like, look, we talk directly with LinkedIn all the time. They're actively searching all the time for these automation tools. They are the one of the few companies out there that do not want you to use automation. So if you use one of these tools, you've probably realized, or anyone listening, I should say, um, so Seth, I know you do better than that. <laughs> If, you, if anyone's used them, you notice the code changes almost daily because they're always trying to stay ahead of the algorithm for LinkedIn to be able to find them. That's not a way to be able to play. I've talked to so many different people and they're like, Josh, my account got canceled because you get caught using automation. Look, they're going to boot you off the platform. And that's just years of time and effort and energy to be able to go in. And that's your name. That's your reputation, Right. People buy from people, human beings run companies. So this is what's going on. You don't send messages of the company on LinkedIn, you send them as human beings. So that's one of the biggest difference I see there. Now you have lots of agencies. Agencies are great if they're done right. That's the biggest difference. Like I don't work with everyone. Like the biggest thing that we have is trust. I've seen a lot of these companies, they're hiring people from all around the world to be able to go in and kind of quote unquote manage um, someone's profile. Look, I know you work with Kevin Harrington, right? Kevin's not going to allow anyone just to be able to go in and go, hey, I've got someone from Malaysia. They're going to go into your account and they're going to do all your messaging. Am I right? <laughs> Too true. It's, it's just not going to happen. Kevin wants to know, make sure there's trust involved. So that's why I've been able to work with people like Dan, um, you know, Dan Sullivan and Joe Polish and John Maxwell and other people like that because we have a level of trust. People are either knowing that I'm going through personally to be able to help develop their messaging. And then we have real human beings that are trained by me within my company that are here in the States, know how to be able to connect on a human level and not miss those social cues that might be missed by either automation or someone that's just hired 
at a very low level to be able to go through and do, it's just, it's just mass human automation at that point, right? So you're not really getting away from automation. It's either automation by computers or mass automation by, by humans. We don't do that. Ours is all about really developing those relationships. Honestly, through the techniques that my mom taught me how to treat another human being when I was growing up, we're just doing it online. So how do you, so why is your, you talked a little bit about the difference, but I want to dive in a little bit deeper. Please. How, let's talk about the results. So what was someone, a client, what was the problem they came to you with? How did you solve it using this method? And what type of, how did it work? Yeah, no worries. So let's just go into Dan Sullivan, strategic coach. He's been around for 30 years, right? He's one of the most prolific uh, business coaches out there. You know, being able to go in there and being able to take over his voice. He's never allowed anyone to be his voice online. So that was one of the biggest pieces, right? He didn't even have a LinkedIn profile when we first started. Um, all they had was strategic coaches profile. So we built out that profile and we had to be able to garner and be able to grab and understand his language patterns. You know, some people say aloha, some people say hi. You've got to be able to connect, right? Not just speak at people, but speak with people. You've got to write conversationally. So his goal was to be able to, you know, bring the right people into strategic coach by actually building that relationship with them. And so that's kind of what we did, right? We're reaching out there. One of the biggest pieces that a lot of these influencers do not have time for is because they're getting so much messaging. I'm sure you understand. I'm sure Kevin gets it to be able to respond, but how do you respond in a way that's authentic? And that's what he was looking to be able to do is to be able to have authentic relationships with the people that were following him to be able to draw them in. It's rare that we take time out to appreciate those people that are engaging on our content, that are signing up for our courses, that are, that are following us online and to appreciate them for this. We've all been conditioned to like, comment, share, post, like, comment, share, post, and we're in these patterns. And when you, to create a stopgap in that pattern, appreciate something for something they've never been appreciated for. And that's what we were doing. Someone looked at his profile. Someone engaged on his content. And then we actively reached out to, to his ideal audience to be able to give them what they really want. Everyone in this world, Seth, posts online for one reason above all else. I don't care who you are, what you think. You can say that, all right, I post to get clients, advocacy, whatever. We've all been conditioned to post to get those. And this is why people call me the dopamine dealer of LinkedIn. Is we post to get those hits of dopamine we all want online, whatever platform it is, when we get that engagement. So that's what we do for our clients as well. We allow them to be able to also engage on their own other, other people's content. When you get a, if I'm going to be honest, you know, I've been, it's been amazing being able to spend time on Clubhouse with Kevin Harrington and stuff like that in some of the rooms. But th at the same time, if I was on LinkedIn and Kevin commented on one of my posts and was like, Josh, man, great, love this ad. That makes me feel better. It allows my audience to be able to see that. And it makes you want to be able to build a relationship and be able to find that out. So that's what we were doing, man. Long and short of it, Seth, we're building relationships that turn into advocates that allow the byproduct to become clients. And that's what we do for all of our clients. What do you like best about what you do? The relationships we're able to see. It's the messages when you see, not only it's great, like clients, we knock that out of the park, right? We get our, we build relationships. We don't just get leads for our clients. But when you get to be able to see the messaging of how these people have been affected by these influencers over time is really epic. I'll give you, I'll give you one instance that I think automation misses. And this is what shows you, shows me why I know what I do matters each and every day. We had someone reach out to Dan after, after, you know, we had reached out to him and said, Hey, I just want to say thank you for liking my recent post." And his message will stick with me forever because his response was Dan. You'll never know what this means to me. Today, I had planned on being my last. But by you showing me to appreciate the little things in life I took for granted, gave me new hope for this world. Thank you. I will continue to push forward. That's what I love about what I do because these little acts of appreciation, because we're not just going straight after, I'm going to get you out. Going after clients is one for one. Building advocates and changing people's lives is, is a ripple effect that we will never see. I, I mean, we say that every day in our morning staff meeting, marketing saves lives in many different ways. So that is absolutely beautiful. And I've had similar experiences. So I totally resonate with that. What, with all the success you've achieved, what's your biggest challenge now? 
biggest challenge is being able to make sure that I'm helping the right people with the right message. Um, because I want to be able to help everyone. You know, we're, we've gone through, we're putting together, you know, master classes to be able to go in because I've been behind the scenes for most of it, right? Working with some of the biggest influencers on LinkedIn to be able to help them, you know, really draw in, engage and build relationships with their audience. But the problem is with that, that's great. I can be able to help that. I've worked with major corporations to be able to help them doing that. But the biggest challenge I'm having right now is to be able to make sure that I create a process. I'm, I, I have the biggest problem of believing that the right, every message is right for everyone, right? This is really like, oh, here's my training. It's going to be able to help you with everything that you could ever want. And it works for everyone. Seth, you and I both know that's not correct. Now there's basic techniques that be able to go it. So that's the biggest challenge I'm working with right now is to be able to make sure and help everyone. Cause I see too much bad information from other people that are quote unquote LinkedIn experts. And I'm never going to call, my, call myself an expert because I'm always a constant learner, right? I want to be a, a consistent learner, always educating myself because at an expert level, I've reached a pinnacle that I don't feel I can go past. So I always want to be, you know, continue to excel. So that's my thing, man. Being able to reach larger audiences to be able to help them understand that there's a better way to be able to do it. There's a better way to build a relationship and to truly humanize the way that we are online. That is my overarching goal. I want to remind everyone that you can be human online and it's a great way to be able to build that relationship. That is a great writer downer. Talk a little bit about the book that you wrote, Balance is Bullshit, How to Successfully Integrate Work and Life. What inspired you to write that? My own life, man. It's uh, going through. I mean, if, if anyone ever says they wrote a book that wasn't inspired by their own life, they're lying to you. I mean, or the book's not that great. That I wrote the book because there were so many things, you know, prior to this reset in my life, I went through, I was running multiple different companies and everyone saw me as, oh, wow, Josh lives the perfect life. But that's because we were taught as a young age, especially as men and, and entrepreneurs, we see this, don't everyone, don't let everyone see your cracks. And I mean, I was bearing so much weight and I, I it honestly led me down a path where I wasn't happy. Seth, at one point, I remember I moved back in 11 years ago from working at an office downtown to working at my home office because I had my son. And I wanted to be that father that was always present. And I had my office doors open. And one of the biggest changes was that at one point, those office doors shut. And because of everything I was going through, and that office not only became a sanctuary, but a coffin for me, where I contemplated where and what I was doing and why I should be continued to be on this path. And by going through that and releasing everything, that's why I wrote this book because I never wanted another entrepreneur because we put ourselves in these boxes that we're all alone. And we take on so much weight of the world to be able to say, we're going to change it. I tried to change the world on my own. I couldn't do it. I almost killed myself doing it. So I put this book out to let everyone know, like, look, this whole like myth of work-life balance we don't have a work life and we don't have a personal life. We have one life. We have to live it that way. It would kind of be like if I told you that I, you know, I had multiple personalities. You'd be like, oh, Josh needs to be locked up in a sane asylum. We have that one life and we need to be able to live that way. And I, I see it affecting so many entrepreneurs. And I felt if I shared my stories on what I went through and the hardships that I went through and how I changed that, if it can even affect one other person and be able to give them hope, there's a better way to be able to do it. That's all I look for. You are, you mentioned yourself, you're a voracious learner. What are three of the best books you've ever read and you can't quote your own? <laughs> you know, um, I have The Art of War, of course, um, by Sung Soo. I mean, amazing book. Um, recently, I'm reading right now, I'm really enjoying it. I just met this, uh, met him on Clubhouse. And I'm sorry to keep on mentioning that, but we've, we're all on that these days. Um, but it's Money by Rob Moore. Um, really, it really opened my eyes around that. And then if I had to think of another one, I would say The Pursuit of Happiness um, by the, you know. Chris um, Gardner. Thank you so much. You know, I mean, that is one of the biggest things that I really think that really changed a lot of what I was doing and why. What else do you want to share that I didn't think to ask you? I think we covered the business. We covered the book. We covered my personal life. I mean, we've covered a lot of things in one of the shortest times uh, that usually I get on here and we keep on going and I start rambling on about an entire life. So I, I appreciate it. 
the biggest thing that I think that we need to be able to to talk about today is, you know, how how guys like you, I, and everyone listening can be able to continue to work together. This is the biggest thing that I think most people miss out on is that every single opportunity for us to be able to go in, a lot of us have been spending time, you know, we all look at LinkedIn, we look at Facebook, we look at Instagram. What I do and how I do it is not specific, right? LinkedIn's just a vehicle. All these are just vehicles for us to be able to get our message out. And trying to be able to play the algorithm on all of them is what's going to keep on making everyone stop in their tracks and have to rethink every six months when that algorithm is reset. If we pay attention to the one algorithm, that the only algorithm that matters, we'll do so much better. That's the human algorithm. If we work to be able to really understand that human algorithm, we will only be able to evolve with it not have to, uh, to reset it and try and find a new way each and every time. Everyone's like, oh, what's the new trick? What's the new technique? There are no tricks or techniques when you're talking to another human being. And if we do that, it will set you up for life. That is a wonderful way to wrap up. For our folks watching or listening, where is the best place for us to go, for us to send them to, to learn more about Joshua Lee and all things you've got going on? Yeah, no worries. Well, of course, always on LinkedIn, you can find me at Joshua B. Lee. Um, or you can go to our website, standoutauthority.com, and uh, be able to connect with us there. Awesome. This has been Seth Green for Sharkpreneur with Joshua B. Lee of standoutauthority.com. Joshua, thank you so much. Thank you, Seth. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening. We'll see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.